Well, I'm Pastor Michael, and Merry Christmas. I love the Christmas light necklaces. Those are awesome. Um, and thinking of a message for today, trying to write a message for today, it was just kind of a struggle. Because every time I sat down to, to write tonight's message, every time I sat down at the computer, I kept getting distracted. Over and over, I would sit down to write this topic, and then I would drift off, sort of daydreaming. And this distraction and drifting off topic, it would usually begin with me kind of leaning back in my chair, and it would give that creak that it gives. And then I'd start thinking to myself, wow, I can't believe it's already Christmas time. Where did this year go? Seems like it was in fast forward. And it's sort of wild to think back to last year at Christmas time and realize just how much the world has changed around us. This last year has brought with it pandemics, political turmoil, stress and craziness. And it wouldn't surprise me at all if collectively our blood pressure has like gone up one notch from last year, maybe two notches, right? And there's a moment in this last month that perfectly captures what this last year was like. It was this moment where we were having our high school Christmas party. And for this, the high school group's uh, Christmas party, we decided to do a gingerbread house decorating competition. And the rules to this competition were simple, right? Everyone was making beautiful gingerbread houses. So how do you, how do you make the, how do you pick the best one? The rule was, it needs to tell a story. We need to look at the gingerbread house and see a story. And as we went around kind of judging the gingerbread houses, looking for the, the best one, the winner, we saw quite a few absolutely beautiful, stunning gingerbread houses. One of them, for instance, told the story of the Wizard of Oz, right? So it had the full yellow brick road there, like the, 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 um, the evil witch was stuck under the house with her legs, and Dorothy was there. It was beautiful. And every gingerbread house we walked by told these different stories with these intricate details. But towards the end of the loop, we looked over and I looked over and I noticed that there was one particular gingerbread house uh, that stuck out from the rest, quite a bit different. The sides of the house, the icing was melting, the candy on the roof was falling off, and the, the house itself had like been broken they broke it and then tried to glue it back together. So the house was kind of a mess. And it was one of those delicate situations as a pastor, because when you walk up to a gingerbread house like that, and you've seen all these other ones, you can't really just walk up and say, wow, your, your gingerbread house is ugly, right? This is a really ugly gingerbread house. You have to, you have to be a little bit more delicate. And uh, it would have been obvious if I was lying and said, hey, this is, this is beautiful, because it was pretty obviously a hot mess, right? So what does a pastor do in such a situation? I approached a gingerbread house and I said, tell me about your story, right? <laughs> tell me about your story. And those high schoolers turned to me and said, this gingerbread house represents 2020. I get it. There it is. And I actually brought that gingerbread house for you tonight. Would you like to see it? All right, here we go. Prepare yourselves. All righty. Here she is. We've got the icing melting down the sides. I've got it. And you kind of, you see this house and you realize, oh man, that kind of is 2020. When our gingerbread houses look like that, we know it's been a rough year. In fact, I was trying to think of one word, just a single word that would capture everything that happened to this year, that would capture the year of 2020. And the single word that I think probably captures it best is broken. Broken. Things are not as they should be. The tension, the chaos, the brokenness. I think it was difficult writing this message for Christmas because for many of us, this is the world we see around us. And if this is not the world you see, this is the world your kids see. And collectively as a society, I think we're just hoping 
that next year will be better, right? We're hoping that next year's gingerbread house won't quite look like this. And during this last year, maybe you've pondered to yourself this question. Why doesn't God just fix all the brokenness? And get this, God has heard our prayers. And God has sent us a response. There's a reply in your inbox. See, when we cry out and ask, why doesn't God do something about the disease and illnesses in the world? Oh, but he does. God sends us a baby. And we ask, why doesn't God do something about all the chaos and brokenness? Oh, but he does. He sends us a baby. We ask, why doesn't God do something about the injustices in the world around us? Oh, but he does. He sends us a baby. God has answered our requests. God has sent us a reply. And it's a baby. And when we first hear that God's response to our problems is to send us a baby, we want to go, uh, really? Our gut reaction is to maybe ask, um, God, are you sure the answer to our brokenness isn't possibly something else? And in this moment right now, whether God's answer makes sense to you or not, there is probably one thing we can all agree on, and it's that this claim of Christianity is utterly unique. This is an utterly unique answer to anything else you'll find in the world. Yeah, all the brokenness, the chaos, the corruption, the disease, death. Nope, the answer isn't a political policy. Nope, the answer isn't a self-help book. Nope, the answer isn't a new technology. The claim is that God has sent his answer to us, and it's a baby. No one else around the world is running around making that kind of claim. At least we can all agree it's unique. And you know what? God sending a baby to answer our brokenness, this will never, never make any sense until, until we stop and reflect on who this baby is. And so that's exactly what we're going to do right now. I know this is unusual, but I'm, I'm actually going to pause and stop talking during the Christmas service. And together, we're going to stop and reflect on that critical question. Who is this baby? In a moment, I'm going to stop talking. We're going to watch a short film together. And this video is designed to help us slow down and reflect. For the next three minutes, just let yourself ask that question. Who is this baby? And if we do not let that question sink in, honestly, nothing else I say for the rest of the evening will really matter. So together, for the next three minutes, we're going to stop and reflect together on who is this baby. It was that silent night when the stars turned their gaze to marvel at the earth. When the heavens gathered breathless round a lowly stable. When a young mother wept tears of worship, falling on the baby in her arms. And the song of the earth arose in Bethlehem soft as the tender beating of his heart and all was calm all was bright yet could this be the same god of abraham the conqueror of israel this baby this fragile life is this child the one who burned his name in rapture across the gasping skies 
whose voice spoke the oceans into crashing rhythms, who crafted the mountains into guardians of the firmament, whose hand ignited the thirst of the deserts and the warring surge of the elemental hosts, who breathed life from dust, broke the oppressor's rule, scattered the chains of his people like sand, and led them through the wilderness with a pillar of flame. Is this child the one whose presence billowed thunderous on Sinai's peak? Who surrounded Job with the roaring wind, stood defiant in the raging furnace, wrote judgment against tyrants, and blazed on the lips of the prophets, scorching history's pages with the fury of his might? Could this be the same God who chose to come as the vulnerable king? setting his throne on straw and manger, drawing forth the tears of shepherds, receiving the gifts of wandering travelers, his fame unknown in this world. He is Jesus, the one who thunders through the heavens, yet whispers to our hearts, who reigns victorious, yet bows to serve the broken. He is God in the fury, God in the silence. He holds this mystery balanced in his hands, holds our questions till they lose their need, until all we see is him. Such a powerful video. That image, that, that silhouette of the manger scene with the pillar of fire in the background, that's just one that, that sticks in my head. Um, this is not a normal baby. And when we really stop and reflect and pause to really ask, who is this baby? The answer leaves us speechless. This arrival of this baby named Jesus it means that God has heard our prayers. God has sent us an answer. God has sent you an answer. But the answer only really makes sense once we realize who the baby is. And as we're still processing the significance of God being born as a baby, I've got an illustration that'll hopefully tie everything that we've heard tonight together. It'll hopefully help you picture the significance of this moment. So here's the illustration for you. See, if there was something maybe on my computer in my office, if there was something on my computer that was really broken, the software went totally haywire. Maybe there was a bug in the system that was making a mess. And maybe imagine that the brokenness on that computer was so severe that the online guides were no help. Tech support, I call in, tech support, they don't know how to fix the problem. The repairman comes out and he can't handle it. In that moment, the only person capable of fixing that level of brokenness is the designer, the author who wrote the code, the one who created the program. And if that's the case with a computer program, we know the problems we're facing in this world are much bigger. Our gingerbread houses are melting, right? There are serious bugs in the system. We see the brokenness. And God responds with the only answer that actually makes sense. The designer arrives to fix the problem. The author comes to repair the brokenness, the creator himself answers the call. This child that is born is no normal child. This is the author of the universe writing himself into creation. The only one capable of repairing a broken world is the architect who created it in the first place. The only one capable of defeating death is the author of life. 
books of the Bible like Luke and Matthew, they tell the story of Jesus' birth. But other books of the Bible like John, they tell the meaning of Jesus' birth. So let's hear from the book of John, chapter 1, verses 10 through 13, how he explains the meaning, the arrival of this baby. He, Jesus, was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or husband's will, but born of God. When things get really messed up and broken, our inclination is to say, okay, we need a fresh start. We need to start this thing over, a reset. And Jesus comes to this earth to give you that opportunity. Jesus gives his own life to give us the right to become children of God, reborn, recreated, refreshed and repaired. If you look at all the other major world religions that are out there, you will find nothing else that gives an answer like this. Other religions might say, here's a prophet, right? This prophet will point you towards the answer. Here's a teacher. He'll tell you about the answer. Here's a philosophy to live by. It will help you cope with the brokenness. And then this claim comes along that is utterly unique. In fact, it's so unique that when we first hear it, oftentimes we're skeptical. At first, we possibly fail to grasp just how powerful this answer is until we literally stop and reflect and pause the service. God has responded to our prayers. Here is a baby, and this baby is the answer. This baby is the creator who writes himself into creation to become the answer. This baby is the creator who writes himself into creation so that he can come and find you. The claim of Christmas is that the God of the universe has arrived. The designer has sent his answer. And if Jesus is who he claims to be, it makes absolute sense why Jesus would say things like in John chapter 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So now that we can see and we've reflected a bit on who this baby is, now that we can see that there is an answer to the brokenness that stands apart from every other possible answer, I would just challenge you now tonight to take action on what we've learned. There's a whole spectrum of places you might be at right now. I know we all came through those doors or logged on in different places. And when it comes to this guy named Jesus, maybe you're, you're a bit unresolved about who this guy is. Maybe you heard what you heard tonight about him was the first time you've ever heard that. If that's the case, thank you for being bold enough to come and investigate this guy, to learn something new. And I would just encourage you now to act on what you've learned simply by just asking some questions. If you don't have any questions right now, that's okay. Sometimes we have to process, but this week you probably will. This is some big news, some big information that gets revealed to us. And likely as it sinks in through this week, you might have some questions. And if you're not sure about who this Jesus guy is, act on what you've learned tonight just by asking some questions. After all, this claim about Jesus is so unique that it at least warrants some investigation. Josh and I would love to talk with you about your questions. Just fill out one of those connection cards on the back of the chair in front of you or online, log on to our church website and you can fill out a connection card. Drop it in the basket with the candles and uh, we'd love to give you a call this next week and just chat a little bit. Connect and have an opportunity to ask those questions. Okay, 
There's another place you might have come through those doors at. Um, Maybe you know about, you already knew about this Jesus guy. Maybe this isn't the first time you've heard about him. But Jesus hasn't really been a serious part of your life. Maybe what you've learned tonight has led you to where you know it's time to make a change. Time to be refreshed and repaired and time to start following Jesus. And I would just challenge you that sometime during this next song, if that's you, sometime we're gonna be singing Silent Night next. During that next song, I want you to close your eyes and I just want you to to talk and reach out to, to Jesus and pray to Jesus. Talk to him like he's right there in front of you and just tell him, Jesus, I want to follow you. Jesus, I want you to be at the center of my life. That's simple. That's your challenge. And if that's something you want, there's actually a lot of power in those words. Maybe more than we realize at first because that passage we just read, it said, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. For some of you, this is a moment where you can make that passage true about you and receive that reset, that recreation. Okay, the whole spectrum, we're kind of working through the spectrum of maybe where you're at walking through those doors. And for some of you, you already are Jesus' followers, right? He is alive and active in your life. And if that's you, your challenge this morning, uh, not this morning, this, see, it's built in this morning. Your challenge this evening from what we've learned so far, is to once again use this moment of this next song as another opportunity to stop and reflect. To just stop and reflect and ask that question about who is this child? As we're singing the words to Silent Night, maybe just take a moment to close your eyes and just remember those images. I'm going to remember that image of that 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 manger scene with the pillar of fire behind it. Take the next moment to stop and reflect again on who this child is. And when you do that, something kind of strange begins to happen. At the end of the song, when you open your eyes again, all our problems no longer seem as big as they were in the beginning. Okay, each of us has a challenge, and I'm going to pray in a moment, but before I pray and close us into the final song, I want you to grab your candle, wherever you have it, I have to reach under the seat. There's two types of candles, one is kind of the twist at the top, and the other one's got a switch at the bottom, but go ahead and turn on your candle and get it ready, because right after we're done praying, we are going to sing our final closing song together. So would you stand with me? And bow your heads, and we'll, we'll close this message in a prayer. Father, we just, um, we just thank you for uh, just the power of your answer. Man, this answer, this baby, is, is actually such a big response that sometimes it just, we have to stop and let it sink in. You wrote yourself into creation to come and save us. You came to this earth to fix the problem that no one else could. God, you've heard our prayers. You've acted and responded. Would you hear, would we just be able to hear you tonight speaking to us, speaking to our hearts? And just letting us know that, man, you love us and you are there. And you want to get to know us. You would come to this earth to get to know us. Father, be with us in this closing song together, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.